So here is the last example for this section. I figured why not combine fractions and radicals all in the same equation, right? I mean, why, why wouldn't you do that? All right, so the thing to understand here is that we're trying to find the common base. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff going on. We've got fractions and radicals. So let's ignore that for right now. Let's see if we can find a base that's common for just the 125 and 25. And if you take the time to think about it, you'll realize that the common base is 5. We know that 5 squared is 25, and we know that 5 to the third is 125. So let's see how that information helps us rewrite this equation so we can go from something that's exponential to something that is hopefully linear. Well, first of all, let's look at this 1 over 125. 125 is 5 to the third. So if I just had this, we would say 5 to the third. However, since it's in the denominator, think back to what we saw in the last video, that means that this is going to be a negative power. It's a negative that's going to put that guy in the denominator. And then this is raised to the 2x plus 1. On the right side of the equation, just ignore the fact that there is a radical. If I just have 25, how do you rewrite 25 as a power? Well, 25 is 5 to the second power. Right? That's it. So how do I incorporate that index? Well, if you think about what we said in a previous video about how the index relates to the power, you'll remember that the index becomes the denominator of the power. So it's 5 to the 2 fifths power. So the 5 squared is the 25. That denominator of 5 is the index of 5 that we see right there. So we have to rewrite it from a radical form into an exponential form. And there's really nothing else to do on the right side. We've got to work on the left side. So over here, as we've seen many, many times, a power raised to a power, so I need to multiply, so that's 5 raised to the negative 6 minus 3. Make sure that you distribute correctly. On the right side, it's just 5 th to the 2 fifths power. All right, these guys have the same base now, which is what we were trying to get. So our equation is going to come straight from those exponents, right? As long as you have the same base on both sides, then your equation will be those powers. So negative 6x minus 3 is equal to 2 over 5. Now, to avoid dealing with a lot of fractions and a lot of heartache, let's go ahead and clear out those fractions. So we identify the LCD, the only denominator here, which is 5, and I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation times that. So times 5 on both sides. Why am I doing times 5? On the right side, those 5's reduce, and I'm just left with 2. Right, so we get rid of the fraction. We may make the numbers bigger on the left side, um, but it's, it's for the best. So we now have negative 30x minus 15. And so now we have a nice linear equation, super easy to solve. So plus 15 to move the constant to the other side. So negative 30x is equal to 17. And in our final step, divide both sides by that coefficient. And we find out that x is equal to negative 17 over 30. Uh, reduce this if you can, but this guy's already reduced. So we are totally done right here. There you go.